Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, spring is in the air around the Ozarks, it feels like it anyway. So my brother Bill is down visiting and thought it'd be a good weekend to get some seeds started. So we thought uh, we could take you inside and we'll kind of show you how we do it and all the equipment we need and uh, we'll kind of go through that today if you don't mind, okay? Okay, I figure we'll set up in the kitchen here in the homestead and uh, it's kind of a good big area that we to work in. Uh, you'll need a sunny window. You'll need a wire rack is what I'm using, but you can use just about anything. Now this one has like five levels. I'm not gonna plant anywhere near that many seeds. I'm just gonna do one level worth of seeds. But, uh, so you'll need those two items and then uh, we'll go over all the other equipment that, uh, that we use anyway. All right, here's a quick run through of the equipment that we use. All right, so the first thing you'll need is some kind of a container, a tray, something that's waterproof that you put your uh, seed containers in so that you can water. Uh, generally, I water from the bottom, which works better. Uh, you're going to need a bucket to mix the soil, the seed are in soil and the liquid. We'll get into that in a minute. Of course, you're gonna need some kind of a, a seed starting mix uh, to um, put the seeds in, that makes sense. Uh, a grow light of some kind, and there's a variety of those available, and we can get into that a little bit later. Uh, you're going to need some something to put the seeds in. I like using the Solo Cups uh, for a variety of reasons, and of course, you're going to need to drill a hole in the bottom of those, so that's what we're going to need a drill of some kind for. Um, we're going to need a pitcher to hold the liquid. I like to add not only just the water, but a little bit of beer and some peroxide um, for that. We're going to need a, um, a mister to, once we have the seeds in the, in the cups and covered, we uh, uh, water them with a little bit of the mister. A heating pad uh, to maintain the temperature. Seeds germinate best and do best when they're above 70 degrees. So that's just to help make sure we maintain that temperature. Um, have some cinnamon to help retard uh, um, microorganisms in the soil like uh, um, the dampening off fungus. And then we're gonna need the seeds. And if you are saving your seeds from year to year, the heirloom varieties that we've talked about before, I like to use old prescription bottles because they block the light and they're waterproof and they're easy to store. So that generally is what you're gonna need. Okay, step one will be actually mixing the soil that we're going to start the seeds in. And my brother has a couple of special ingredients he uses, so we'll let him take it from here. Okay, so when you're starting your seed, of course you need the soil. And I really like this particular mix by Jiffy. But as you can see, it's really fine, which is great for starting the seeds in but it's also really dry. And if you try and just put that into a cup and then put water on top of it, it's not gonna absorb real well. So it's really good to moisten it in advance. So what I generally do is I just take a wool bucket like this and I dump in a bag of potting mix, set that aside. And then I prepare this mixture. And this is what I've found over the years really works well. So first thing, this is uh, actually some Epsom salt that uh, my brother had on hand and it doesn't take a whole lot, about that much. Kind of sprinkle that in. And then uh, I put some beer in it. Now there's some debate online. You're gonna see, see some comments or some sites that say it doesn't really matter. I've been doing it now for about 10 years. There are a lot of carbohydrates and sugars and some yeast and everything in beer that seems to promote the growth of the plant, gives them energy and nutrients that they, they need. And so I always add about a half a bottle of beer uh, to the mix, and this is warm water. So just about a half a, a bottle. Um, you know, it's been suggested that you figure out what you wanna do with the other half uh, on your own. I'm not gonna um, promote one way or the other what to do with that. And then we take some, um, some peroxide, some hydrogen peroxide, just stuff that you buy off the shelf at Walmart or wherever. And this has about, feels like about a half a cup or so in it, which is about what you need and put that. And then that infuses some oxygen to the roots and it also kills off some harmful bacteria. So that's your mixture that uh, you're gonna add then to your potting mix. 
And so I just kind of add it in and then get my hands dirty and kind of work that in. And it's almost like, um, you know, making a, a bread dough or something like that, right? And you kind of kind of stir that up and add a little bit more. Almost feel like Julia Child here <laughs> talking about making a recipe. But um, I'm not going to try and do a Julia Child impression or wear a dress while I'm doing it. So we're going <laughs> to miss out on that particular scene. I don't think we'll have any anyone being upset. So it takes quite a bit. This is a one gallon pitcher, pitcher, uh, pitcher. And as you can see, we're using a lot of that. And so I kind of stir it up. And what you want to get is so it's moist enough that it'll kind of hold together like that. If it falls, if it falls apart, I don't know. There's some. It's pretty much mixed. But if it just falls apart real quick, uh, you don't want that. But you don't want it to the point where it is just sopping wet. You want it to have some, some just kind of like that where it holds together pretty good. So I think that is close to where we want to be. Okay, the next step we're gonna do is uh, actually drill holes in the bottom of the cups to let the water up from below and fill them with soil. The soil's all mixed up and ready to go. And I'll tell you, it really smells good in here. I think it's the enzymes maybe from the beer and everything, you can, you can tell, it really smells good. So, uh, We'll go ahead and demonstrate drilling the holes in the cups. Okay, so you're gonna, of course, take a drill. And generally, I like a, a bit, I like to drill a hole that's about the same size as a pencil. Now, that seems to allow the moisture to come up, but it's not so much that you're, you're wicking everything out. So basically, I just have a stack of Solo cups, and these are just cheap, you know, always save brand Solo cups and start in i just go all the way down and that i think got through most of them yeah so you can see that filled up we got made holes in all of them so then i'm going to take one of these and i'm going to fill it up with some soil so uh we're going to take a handful and you don't want to fill this all the way up to the top so one of the things about Tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, those uh, plants that are actually in the nightshade family, oddly enough, even though we eat them, is um, that they will, once the plant gets started and has formed a stem, if you put more soil around that stem, it will produce roots along that buried stem. So it's a way of kind of getting a really healthy uh, plant to transplant by not filling this cup all the way up. You want to fill it about, um, about two thirds of the way up and you wanna pack it down, not real tight, just kinda of so that it's kinda of got a firm. So that kinda of shows. And then when we start the seed, we're gonna put the seed in there, cover it up with just a little bit of soil, and then, you know, water it and everything. And as that plant grows up, once it gets up above, you know, here, then at some point we'll fill in the rest and all that extra um, uh, stem will produce even more roots. So you'll have a really strong root system for this transplant when you go to put it in the garden. All right, that's some really good information. That's interesting how the stem actually will grow more roots, make the plant a lot hardier than when you move it outside. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and fill all the cups and then we'll come back in a minute and cover putting the seeds in. Alrighty, we have all our cups filled now, about two thirds of the way filled. We have our seeds out here. I decided to go with a few eggplant some peppers, some jalapeno, some poblano, some bell peppers, some lesia peppers, and then also some tomatoes today. We'll be planting some cherry tomatoes, some Roma, some that are called Abe Lincoln. I had a lot of good luck last time growing those, and some brandy wine. All right, uh, now time to put the seeds in the cups. These are little tiny seeds here. You can see them. These are some pepper seeds. So Bill's going to demonstrate how he how he puts those in the in the soil. All right, so we're starting out with the, this variety of pepper. It's called Lesia. Um, I got this out of Baker Creek seed back, oh, it's been about five, six, seven years ago. It is a really nice uh, pepper. It's uh, sweet. Uh, it's really great. It really comes into its own when you're like making fajitas or something like that. 
Uh, it, it comes out sweet and it, that, that heat just kind of brings out the flavor. They're real thick walled too and they're kind of conical shaped. I don't know, they're about that size if, that, if you can make out that. They're not really big, but they're a really great pepper. It's one of my wife's favorites. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out, we're just gonna take a seed. I always put two seeds in uh, just in case one doesn't take off. So you just put them in, I kind of just tap them down a little bit. And then I take a little bit of soil, not a bunch, and I just kind of put in, yep, kind of make a mess, about a quarter inch of soil, something like that, and rough it out, and then kind of tamp it down, just so it's firm, you're not coursing down on it. And then uh, we'll, we'll put some water on this here in a little minute. But then I put just a little bit of cinnamon. And you're thinking, why in the world would he want to put cinnamon on his seeds? And the reason why is because the ground cinnamon, like just like what you'd use for, for cooking, uh, retards any kind of fungus growth. So I uh, mentioned several times already that that dampening off uh, fungus really will take a toll on your plants where the seedlings are small. The cinnamon really helps retard that. So that's why I always add a little bit. And that's as easy as it is. You just put that in. And then of course I wrote down the name of the, the variety so that we know what is in the plant. All right. right, we'll do that 20 more times with our tomatoes, eggplant, and peppers. And then we'll be ready to set up the rack and put some water in there, and we'll cover that next. Okay, we have all the seeds in the cups. We have cinnamon sprinkled on top of all of them. Next, uh, we're just gonna kind of come through and spritz the top with some of this mixture that we had made. And once that's done, kind of moistening that up, we will fill the tray, or not fill the tray, but add some of the same mixture in the tray. And with the holes in the bottom of the cups, they'll be able to soak up that moisture that they need for their roots. Okay, we have our tray set up. We have all the cups filled. Uh, we have the heating pad underneath the bin there. And now we're going to put about an inch deep with the solution. We'll put that in the bottom and it can be soaked up through the holes in the bottom of the cups. And we'll get that started and we'll hang the light and we'll be ready to go. everybody looks like we're ready to roll here we have our light hooked up i may have to pick up another light because it looks like it gets the middle row really good but not the other two uh we'll keep that light right down almost on top of those cups so they get plenty of light uh at night i'll unplug that light uh that way they get about 12 hours of of uh, good direct light a day uh, in the evening the sun does shine in this window which is not this morning but this evening it will shine in uh, when the sun is ready to set so looks like we've got this project pretty much done. Uh, now all we gotta do is a little bit of waiting and we'll have some plants coming up. That'll be exciting. Well, everybody, I wanna thank my brother again for coming down and helping start those seeds. That was a wonderful thing to get started today. Uh, so spring's rolling around. Things are starting to pick up around the homestead. We have chickens arriving at the homestead this week also. So my next video will probably be covering that, the different varieties I have. Uh, that'll be this week. So things are starting to move. We're around the 1st of March now. Spring's just around the corner and it's going to be picking up. I have some little bit more work to do up around the chicken coop. I have some fencing that needs to be done. A uh, lot of things to do around here this time of year. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope y'all have a great week coming up and I hope to see y'all down the trail. Thank you.